Hey guys, welcome to another episode, and today we're talking about one of the other Lychee Slicer beta functions that I've had a chance to test out, and that is the inline supports. This is a great new feature that works out pretty well for anything that's a flat surface, but particularly for anything that has any straight lines that you need to follow, i.e. like, you know, tanks, walls, stuff like that. Of course, we've got our support painter. Everyone's familiar with that. It does our little, you know, circle supports. We can paint them on, we can use pressure, etc. There's been some light improvements to that, I feel like, as well. But the inline support function is what I really like. And this is new. Uh, we did not have this before. And essentially how this works is you will take one support, place it, and create a row based on a straight line. Um, but I'll give you a demonstration as to how you would use this functionally. And see, one of the reasons why I don't love support painters is you can kind of like miss, get these little wonky bits on the side there where I kind of miss. I'll go back and fix those, obviously. But to demonstrate how quickly you can use some of these functions, I'm just kind of like throwing together the supports on this. I haven't even checked islands, but this is really just to demonstrate the functionality. Um, the Sport Painter has a couple more options, I believe, uh, coming in later versions. Right now, I think we're still using the same option sets that we have in the current version. Uh, this is Lychee Slicer 5.0 that I'm using right now, I believe, for the beta. Now, here on the front here, what I'm demonstrating with the painter is, you know, making like little wavy lines and stuff to try to put some supports on there. I'll show you a different way to do it. And you can see this draws like a curve because that line is going to follow the curve. And it's going to just populate this line based on that boop. And there's your inline line of supports. So let's, let's go back a couple steps here and let's redo some of this that we did here on the front with the inline support feature because I love the way this does little things across the curve. It actually follows a nice little curve for you and it's actually gonna show you. And there's our little line and then we can just boop and place those and you have a nice little line of supports and you of course you choose the interval size. Um, And then now, obviously, this is overkill. So I'm going to go in and remove some. Because I don't need that many. But I did create three little rows of supports there right in the front. That are quite neat and would be easy to remove because of the fact that they are nice and spaced evenly. They're going to support nice and evenly. Uh, and then you add your little bracings and you're, you're good to go on that. Now obviously this isn't good to print like this. This is just me messing around with the support painter. Now here's an example of it on a straight edge. And you'll see the difference that this makes on something straight. And when you get, you get a really nice line of coordinated supports. And you can do this on any straight surface quite well. And I'll demonstrate this on another part as well. I mean, not to say that you can't use it on round objects. You can use it on anything flat, realistically. Um, it's gonna be your best bet, but. And I think you can just kind of have some fun with it. I mean, you can create like cross sections. And then you can create more cross sections. And you can just kind of go crazy with it. As long as you continue to hold down shift, it will continue to carry the path 
that you're trying to carry forward and create a row based on that inline uh, position. And then from there you can kind of see how, you know, you can really mess with this to just kind of create some very interesting support structures. Wouldn't recommend using it for everything, but it definitely will have its purposes, I'm sure. All right, let's move on to another object. Now this one's got some really nice flat, straight lines that we can follow. And it is the perfect candidate for this style of support use. And it really doesn't matter the orientation. Pick the best orientation for the object and just go crazy with this. Uh, I plan on using this for anything that I have that has flat areas, especially flat, straight, um, 90 degree angles or straight edges or anything like that. Such a great feature. Now again, you're going to want to click when you place your first support and then you simply click and you, you release it just like you normally would when you place your support. Hold down the shift key and then simply move the support where you want the end of the trail of supports to end and make your other click while holding shift. And you can continue this trail as long as you continue to hold shift. So if you have a big object with a lot of areas you're gonna to wanna to do this too, there are some very simplistic ways to make it happen. I'm not really fully supporting this, but just to give you guys an idea, that is how this would work out. Mostly. And then I'd go back in, do the islands, and figure out where I need my cross bracings and everything else on the inside. But that's a pretty good shell for the outside of this along the um, edges of the hollowed area with enough supports, I think, to support all of that. So that's that would be a very clean uh, supporting Now it doesn't really matter depending on orientation, like I said, it'll just really change the way the supports fall, but for the most part, as long as the object is, you know, still the same object, your orientation is only going to change the way the, you know, the bar uh, bottoms and the bases are going to fall. So, I mean, if you're, if you have an orientation where you have a lot of clustering, where you have a lot of uh, stuff that's all kind of clustered in the same spot. Uh, your best bet might to you know might be to try and change that orientation a little bit to try to adjust it to give you better orientation so you have less clustering, um, less tree trunking, less columning, things like that. So you don't have as much of a um, hard support issues when you go to remove your supports.
I think it's interesting when you misalign these, you'll see that the misalignment will actually cause the inline supports to kind of fall off the row that they're supposed to be in. And that usually only seems to happen to me so far when I'm near a hole. Uh, it'll drop a support along the crack or the edge of that hole instead of dropping it along the line. And that might just be proximity. Could just be the fact that the line of supports I'm drawing isn't exactly 100% straight and it's at a slight angle, even if it's 10 degrees. It might be enough to um, throw it into the hole, so to speak, and that's gonna, you know, cause its own level of issues. But I'm just demonstrating different formations that you can make at different orientation types with this same object, just to kind of demonstrate how versatile this tool actually can be for support building. I think the inline support tool is going to add a great tool to my library of tools. So for those of you that are pro premium users, I believe this is also reserved for that as well. I could be wrong. This could be a standard version, uh, standard feature version for the free users as well. If I'm not, if I, if I am mistaken about that, I'm sorry. I don't actually recall if this was a pro or non-pro, but if you are uh, able to use this feature and it is something that's beneficial, what I'm thinking best use is for terrain, big pieces like uh, bases, uh, square parts, anything with right angles, 90 degree angles, stuff like that. That's where you're going to find the need for these straight lines and never really been a tool where you can draw supports in a straight line like that. So. I really do like the fact and I appreciate that the fact that they have done this and created this tool. So this is a great new feature to be looking forward to. The auto update did not roll out yet, but if you want to download the beta functions, you can download it from Mango 3D's website. I highly recommend it. It's got some great new stuff in it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this new feature showcase. We're talking about some of the new beta functions of Lychee. So far, these are my two favorites that we picked down and that's why we, we did videos on them. We had this one and we also talked about suction cupping. So if you didn't see it, check out that video as well. And again, thanks for watching so much. We appreciate you. Give us a like, sub, and hit that bell. See you again soon.